What's up out the mud? It's your girl Monica. In this video, I'm gonna go over the top 20 medicinal herbs that you need to start growing right now for your family, homestead, and or farm. Um, at the top of the list is garlic. And let me do this quick disclaimer. I got all of this information, as you can see, directly from ChatGPT. ChatGPT is an amazing resource when you need to do research quick, fast, and in a hurry. The key is you have to know how to prompt ChatGPT. And this is the paid version of ChatGPT. So if you're looking at this and you're like, mine doesn't look like that, the reason that it does look different is because I actually pay for it. It's a business expense for me and I absolutely could not do without it. So top of the list is garlic, okay? Garlic is something that we need to grow in our homesteads for medicinal purposes as well as culinary purposes, but definitely for medicinal purposes as it is an antimicrobial, antimicrobial okay? Now, there's going to be certain things that we're going to talk about, when to grow, companion plants, and all that here in just a second. Um, but let's go down the list. Ginger, okay? Nausea, motion sickness, um, digestive discomfort, turmeric, anti-inflammatory, echinacea, immune system, ginseng. Uh, it's an adaptogen, and ginseng has been used to increase energy, reduce stress, peppermint, digestive issues, chamomile. Um, it's a soothing relaxation type of a situation and ir skin irritation and inflammation, lavender, calming and sedative effects, relaxation, improving sleep quality, valerian, natural remedy for insomnia, anxi anxiety, and nervousness, St. John's wort, um, moderate depression and anxiety, ginkgo, cognitive enhancing properties, feverfew, uh, relieving migraines and headaches, and it's an anti-inflammatory, licorice, uh, soothing sore throats, coughs, and respiratory infections, ashwagandha, an adapted, another adaptogen, reducing stress, anxiety, and fatigue, holy basil or tulsi, um, promotes relaxation, reduces stress, mental clarity, nettle, antihistamine, a natural antihistamine, dandelion, uh, traditionally used as a diuretic, and it supports kidney and liver function, milk thistle, liver protective properties, support liver function, detoxification, aloe vera, soothing burns, wounds, we all know about aloe vera, and rosemary. Uh, to improve memory, concentration, and cognitive function. So this information is obviously, I'm not like a doctor or anything like that. So the disclaimer there is this information is for educational and informational purposes only. I asked Chat GPT um, to pretend like it was an expert in ancient holistic medicine and list the top 20 medicinal herbs used across the globe in every culture. And I also wanted it to provide me with the ailments that they have been used to treat historically. So all of this information came from ChatGPT's research of what is on the internet regarding that prompt that I gave it. Now let's kind of go down the list a little bit because I wanted to also have it tell me when I needed to plant these, the growing op the optimum growing conditions, and the best time of, or the best companion plants to plant along with. So here is how I rewrote my prompt. I said, rewrite and add the best way to grow each herb their optimal growing conditions, the best time of year to plant, and any companion plants that aid in their development. And this is what I love about ChatGPT. It would have taken me a week or two to come back with this information, but here it is all nicely um, kind of spelled out for me. Optimal growing conditions, they grow in well-drained fertile soil with full sun exposure, best time to plant cloves in the fall, a few weeks before the first frost day. Uh, compl companion plants, plant near roses to repel uh, aphids and other pests. So a whole bunch of different pieces of information for each one of these. I'm just going to put this in a, a PDF that you can download. Uh, at, if you go into the description box, feel free. But these are, are herbs that you want to start to grow in your medicinal herb garden. And that would actually count as your first act in my new community called Homestead Heroes. It's a place where if you're actually trying to get your homestead or farm off the ground, but you feel like you're stuck, and you need a place of accountability to be able to continue to get you to move forward. I put this together because I kind of fall in that, that boat sometimes myself. So in this community, it's basically a way that you can have several people who are doing the same thing as you keep you accountable. So homesteading basically is the act of you becoming self-sufficient and not depending on you know the, the pharmacy or the grocery store or whatever as, as, as much as you do now, right? And it takes a, a process, a step-by-step -step process to get to where some people have already gotten to, where they're totally self-sufficient and off the grid and all of that. Others of us are at some varying stage on that process, on that spectrum. 
I just got chickens. I started my farm in 2019, got my farm number, got a grant for a high tunnel, but I'm still going to the grocery store. I'm still going to the pharmacy. I'm still doing a whole bunch of stuff that I would really rather not be doing. So I decided to create a community to help keep me accountable to doing the things that I need to do in order to really become self-sufficient. Um, and then, you know, farming, homesteading, there's six in one hand, half a dozen in the other. Homesteading is more just about you and your family, whereas farming has a capitalistic component to it. We'll talk about that in another video. But bottom line, this Homestead Heroes community has levels to it. And level one is like your first act of self-sufficiency. I don't care if you're in an apartment, you can do something. You can start making your own bread. You can start your own medicinal herb garden and create your tinctures and your salves and things like that and start stop depending so much on going to the pharmacy or the grocery store or whatever the case may be. So that's the, that's the first act, right? And then in level two, it's land seeker. Because if you are in an apartment or you're in a situation where you don't have a lot of land, um, it does help when you're trying to homestead and be self-sufficient to have a half acre, quarter acre or more, right? And so in land seeker, there are a couple of classes that once you get done with your first act, you move up and you go to level two land seeker. And that's where you actually can learn um, how to do what I did, which is buy land without a bank. I basically put the whole kit and caboodle in here to show you step by step how to do that. Um, and then first before that even is how to actually find a, a ideal homestead property. So basically this community I'm building with the homestead journey in mind, right? You got to get started somewhere, even if you are in an apartment, even if you are living with someone and you like, you know, sandwiches twice a week, go start to make your own bread, right? That's one, that's an act that you could, you could actually do. Um, doing this medicinal garden, this medicinal herb garden is an act. You got to start somewhere. You need that first act of self-sufficiency. Um, you might, you know, get some backyard chickens and start, you know, you know, raising chickens for your own eggs, whatever it is, you got to get started somewhere. And this group will help you kind of be focused on that. Um, and then it goes from land, from that to land seeker and then apothecary pro. When you get to this level, you've got that medicinal herb garden. You've got basically every herb that you need access to in order to cover whatever ailment you or your family members could come up with. Again, disclaimer, this is not like to replace doctors and going to, you know, the hospital and all of those different things. These are just, you know, herbs that God gave us to help us heal ourselves. He gave us everything that we need and it's not to replace those that he blessed with the knowledge of medicine and all of those things. It's kind of a compliment. Um, and then we're going to go on to those of us who are really serious uh, about homesteading to the pantry prodigy level, which is level four. And I can't wait to get there because that's where I know that my family will have enough potatoes, onions, eggs, staples, that if something were to happen, I've got a pantry, a you know, 12 to 18 month pantry uh, full of items that I can feed my family with, right? Uh, after pantry prodigy is revenue rapids, because even if you're homesteading and you're not trying to start a farm per se, which has got like that more business aspect to it, you still need money. OK, you still need money as a homesteader. So revenue rapids is all about taking those things that you those cultivars that you are good at growing or raising right livestock and whatever products that they produce and turning it into money for your homestead. So that's what Revenue Rapids is all about. And then we're going on to sustainable water because at the end of the day, if you don't have a water source on your homestead, that is like the lifeblood of your homestead. So either, you know, we're gonna explore, you know, grants for wells or even, you know, just how to dig a well. There's ways that you can do it yourself. So that's what level six is about. Livestock legacy is going to be the, the, the level where we focus on making sure we've got all of the animal husbandry things going on that we need to have going on. Um, the protein sources, be they small, like, you know, chicken, quail or rabbits or larger like goats, cows and hogs, you know, and, and whatever else. Right. Um, and then we, you know, the guardian animals that take care of those, like your donkeys and your livestock guardian animals. So that's what level seven is all about. Level eight is soil steward because those animals are going to be necessary in order for you to improve the quality of your soil because you can't do it really well without animals. Yes, you can do cover crops and reintroduce nitrogen, but nothing can help your soil quality better than a, gr a good rotational uh, grazing program that incorporates livestock, right? 
So that's level eight. And then level nine is once you've got all of those done, you are officially a homestead hero and can go help other homesteaders um, and have the receipts to show them, hey, I've got all of these things done. I can go. I, I'm a homestead hero. That's kind of like, you know, a fun thing. It's just a fun thing for us to use as a means to keep us accountable in this journey. So I thought this would be something cool. I hope you guys think it is too. Um, I will be hosting different things with live trainings. You can click over here on the calendar. When I, you know, get those on there, you'll be able to see and just be able to click and join. Um, the classroom will have all of the classes that I have added. I recently added the farm calculator here. I'm going to do a separate video on that. I've done one on that before, but I'm going to do another one. But right now, these are the classes that are in there, how to find a homestead property, how to buy land without a bank, and how to, how to start a homestead. Again, classes get unlocked at different levels, and the community is where we can just go in there and chat with one another, instant message one another, and without having to be on social media. So I hope you guys like it and definitely get your herbs started. Um, I've already got mine started. Here is what I was able to get from the um, from the actual plant store. It's not a whole lot. I was able to get my um, rosemary and these are $3 seedlings. And so, you know, the entrepreneur in me was very interested in seeing that there weren't very many medicinal herbs. There's my peppermint. Of course, that's the aloe. Uh, we've got the um, chamomile, okay, and then I've got the lavender. And these were the only ones I was able to find. Four out of the 20 medicinal herbs that were on chat G GPT. And I went to two different nurseries, and that's Oreo, my cute little puppy. But yeah, I went to, to two different nurseries and was only able to find like four herbs. So your girl is about to add a third is this my third or fourth cash crop? I can't remember. But anyway, I'll, I'll go over all of that when I do the farm calculator. But that is how you begin to think, it, you know, with the end in mind. If you see a gap in the marketplace where there's no medicinal herbs at the nurseries, then you can come in and next season have hundreds and hundreds of seedlings with nothing but medicinal herbs and, you know, bring some revenue onto your homestead. All right, y'all. I'll talk to you later. Have a great weekend. Peace.